um, it becomes more noble as it becomes stronger and evolves into a form of mercy. At all costs, at all costs, this idea of mercy is not to be confused with pity or compassion. Uh, pity is, for Nietzsche, a reactive emotion, one where uh, one is part of morality, where one comes to share in the suffering with someone else. Mercy is being strong enough to forgive rather than feeling that suffering yourself. Okay, uh, this is not an isolated point about, about mercy for Nietzsche. Um, in Daybreak, he makes a similar point. He says, let us eliminate the concept of sin from the world and let us soon dispatch the concept of punishment after it, like extracting uh, debt down to the <laughs> Zarathustra, he has Zarathustra say that man be delivered from revenge. That is for me the bridge to the highest movement. Overcoming the resentful need to extract revenge and punishment. Okay, on to section 11. Section 11 now is continuing a discussion of justice. It's um, in some ways a uh, tangent away from morality because what he's doing here in, the, in this section in section 11 and 12 these two sections is arguing that um, uh, he's, he's arguing that um, a common understanding of the origin of guilt is incorrect. So he's arguing that what often people think of as the origin here is not. And in fact, this idea of um, this idea of justice, he winds up praising as a um, as a non-moralized value. Okay, so we'll see this in a second. Um, so section 11 starts with this. He says, here, so here, a word in opposition to recent attempts to seek the origin of justice on an entirely different ground, namely that of resentment. Okay, so this is a discussion of the attempt to base justice on the idea of resentment that he thinks is incorrect. And along the way, he's going to give an account of justice not based on resentment. Um, okay, so justice, he's saying here, did not originate in this idea of resentment. Um, but this idea, let's put it this way, this idea of resentment is um, a moralized understanding of justice, associated with vengeance and revenge. And this interpretation, this moralized version of justice, is a late addition. Um, it's a, an interpretation that is more recent than an older understanding of justice. And this idea of a moralized, um, moralized attribution of blame for suffering, this is the passage that I alluded to a while ago where he says this is found most beautifully among anarchists and anti-Semites. This idea of resentment that then involves blaming someone else. It now blooms most beautifully among anarchists and anti-Semites namely in secret, incidentally, as it has always been, like the violet, albeit with a different scent. He says, um, so it will, not be, it, it will not surprise us to see proceeding again from just such circles attempts like that often made before, namely 
to hallow revenge under the name of justice. As if justice were basically only a further development of the feeling of being wounded. And retroactively, to raise to honor along with revenge the reactive affects in general and without exception. Mm -hmm. um, so resentment um, is, let me just suggest, it. resentment is the basis for revenge and vengeance. And on a moralized understanding of justice, that, sorry, on a moralized understanding of justice, that's what it's called, justice. Uh, I'll say that again. Um, so, under the moral system of values, vengeance and revenge and resentment are the basis for justice. But Nietzsche is saying that this is a very um, late addition um, and one that um, he's warning us about. That there's another understanding, a non-moralized understanding of justice that's not the same as revenge. In fact, it's not reactive in this way at all. Um, so he's continuing here that um, resentment is simply reactive and therefore a kind of weakness. Um, and the real mistake, he thinks, is thinking that justice is reactive in this way. In fact, he says, at the bottom of page 48, um, in fact, he says, um, the last ground com conquered by the spirit of justice is the ground of reactive feeling. So the spirit of justice, I think we can say, for Nietzsche, the spirit of justice properly understood is in opposition to resentment and um, revenge and, um, and reactive feelings in general. And then we get this unbelievable passage at the very bottom of 48. So one more time, uh, Nietzsche is suggesting that a understanding of justice that he endorses, a proper understanding of justice, is not one based on reactive emotions of vengeance and revenge, but rather is in opposition to those. The moralized understanding of justice is vengeance and revenge, is based on this feeling of resentment. His understanding of a non-moralized justice is in opposition to that. Okay? Okay. And then we get this unbelievable passage. He says, he says, if it really happens that the just man remains just, even toward those who injure him, and not merely cold, moderate, distant, indifferent, being just is always a positive way of behaving. Right? So, we're imagining somebody remaining just even toward someone who has harmed them. Harm him. If it really happens that the just man remains just even toward those who injure him. If the high, clear objectivity that sees as deeply as it does generously of the just eye, the judging eye, does not cloud even under the assault of person, personal injury derision, accusation. All right, so someone's remaining just, even when attacked, even when subject to personal injury, even when accused and derided. Someone's main, able to maintain a clear and objective eye, clear and objective eye, even in the face of those personal attacks. Well then, that is a piece of perfection and highest mastery on earth. What's more, Nietzsche says, something one would be prudent not to expect here, in which one, in any case, should not fall too easily believe. This is a rare and difficult strength that only very few individuals have to maintain their objectivity, even when they themselves are subject to injury. That's what justice requires. 
and it's a rare and difficult thing to achieve. Um, this is probably the highest praise that Nietzsche has anywhere in the genealogy. Um, and amazingly enough, this extremely high praise, this is a case of perfection and highest mastery on earth. For a just person, justice understood in this way is someone who is able to overcome their own reactive emotions, their own desire for revenge, their own vengeance, their own resentment, overcome that and see the world, the social world, themselves and others, objectively, not simply from this reactive way. So, consider historically, on um, Rome 49, justice on earth represents precisely the battle against reactive feelings against our tendency to wallow in our own pain and instead to see things objectively. Precisely the battle against reactive feelings, the war against them on the part of active and aggressive powers that have used their strength in part to call a halt to and impose measure on the excess of reactive pathos and to force a settlement. Everywhere justice is practiced and upheld, one sees a stronger power seeking means to put an end to the senseless raging of resentment among weaker parties or to it, whether groups or individuals, in part by pulling the object of resentment out of the hands of revenge, in part by setting in place of revenge a battle against the enemies of peace and order, in part by inventing, suggesting, in some cases, imposing compensation, in part by raising certain equivalents for injuries to the status of the norm to which resentment is henceforth once and for all restricted. Okay, so various ways in which we have strategies of overcoming those kinds of reactive forms of resentment in the name of justice. But the most decisive thing that the highest power does and forces through against the predominance of counter and after feelings, the most important thing that we can do in the name of justice, in the name of overcoming through strength our uh, reactive emotions, is anybody know? establishment of law. So law, this is like positive law, it's not moral. This is like passing laws in a society that will take vengeance out of the hands of the individuals who are victimized and put it in the hands of an objective mechanism, an objective so that there are no longer blood feuds to compensate for injuries, but rather there's an objective procedure. Um, okay, so that's the bottom of 49. We'll pick up from there next time.